I really like to use are these wonderful power strips. You just need to connect this wire to this wire. It's super easy, super easy to use. Smart guy, he's not an electrician, no. but he, he, he can do this. And so no, but it's aspirating. There's Cindy. <laughs> Cindy, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna lower your um your video. Hi guys, welcome to the live stream. How is everybody doing? Welcome to this very special live Meet the Miniaturist talk. It's a Meet the Miniaturist talk. Um, this is sponsored by um, hbsminiatures.com. As uh, folks are joining, I have the chat box open. So please do say hello. Hi, Anita. Good to see you. Good to see everybody joining. Chat box is open. Let me know that you can see me, hear me, and definitely tell me where you are joining from. Hey, Fatima, good to see you. Joyce, hello. Carla and Barbara and Susan. Great to see everybody. This is going to be quite a crowd because we had a really nice registration. Hey, guys, good to see everybody. We've got, oh my goodness. Good to see, we've got Atlanta, we've got Arizona, we've got Vermont, we've got Oregon and Bangor, Boca. Hey, Veronica, good to see you. Um, California, Virginia, ah, love it, love it, love it, love it. Great to see everybody. I'm gonna give folks another minute to join. Um, as I, if you're just joining, welcome, welcome. Um, definitely let me know where you're joining from. It's good to see everybody. Um, first of all, thank you to uh, hbsministers.com for sponsoring this little talk. Hey, Doug, good to see you. Hey, Aileen and Barbara. Um, another Barbara, tons of Barbara's on. Good to see her, Michelle. Um, but so big thank you to hbsministers.com for sponsoring this little talk. Um, if you don't know me, if you're joining here for the first time, one of my Meet the Miniaturists, um, I call myself an unapologetic miniaturist. Um, I'm all in on this craft, hobby, art, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I do it from a place of, it is my business. Uh, I promote miniatures every chance I can get. I love to talk about miniatures, but I also sell miniatures. So, uh, and I do that in various forms. I do I sell online. In fact, I do have an estate sale coming up. I'm going to give you a little preview in a little second before we actually start the talk. Good to see everybody just joining. Um, hey, Debbie. Definitely, um, I love to know where you guys are joining from. And also, if you are new to my live stream, I love to know if you guys are, um, if this is like your first live stream that you're joining from, um, from my channel. Uh, but anyway, I'm an apologetic, I'm unapologetic about miniature. So I also promote miniature. So I do a series like Cold Meet the Miniaturist. I have a number of them that I've just done that I, I'm a little behind getting them loaded onto my YouTube channel. But um so look on my YouTube channel for some previous uh, Meet the Miniaturist live streams. I did one at the Museum of Arts and Design just recently. I met with Joanna Fisher. She is the artist behind uh, the Venetian Palazzo in miniature, which is on view right now at the Museum of, uh, of Arts and Design in New York City. So I had a live stream from there, which was awesome. Haven't loaded it yet, but... Um, I will soon met with a Glenn Eric Anderson. He's a miniaturist um, uh, maker of uh, mostly like furniture and works with wood and um, and and so yeah, check, that will be loaded soon. And but but but, but Esther Marker who makes three D miniature lamps and um, uh, lights in uh, using three D technology that is loaded. Look for that. That was an awesome meet the miniaturist. But what's coming up is and. Uh, this is a really important um, Meet the Miniaturist coming up this Tuesday. It's a special evening edition, 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, I will be live streaming with folks from the Walt Disney Family Museum. I don't know if you guys knew this, but Walt Disney was a miniac like you and me. Uh, he was into miniatures, and we are going to be meeting with the folks over there um, at the museum in San Francisco, and they're going to be taking us through um, the history of, of, of uh, Walt Disney as, and his interest in miniatures and how it inspired a lot of uh, the iconic Disney uh, brand we see today. So that's going to be awesome. Uh, the registration link is up. Please, if you want to join, register, and, um, and I'll see you on Tuesday at 7 p.m. 
Ah, oh, what else? Okay, this I do want to share a little bit more about what what I'm doing lately because uh, before I talk, we get into this talk, but um, I've been working on an amazing estate collection. Um, the name of the folks uh, uh, whose estate it was, it, it they were the Buck Alters. Um, oh no, that's not it. Don't look at that. Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. You should see, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of preview of some of the uh, miniatures that is going uh, in this auction. So I'm going to be announcing the auction next week. It will be in September. Uh, it is an, an extraordinary collection of, of fine art miniatures that this couple had amassed um, in, in retirement. Um, I wrote a story about them in the, uh, Doll's House and Miniature Scene Magazine, the Buck Alters. And, and, and talk about how it is a mini love affair because you know they loved each other, but they also had this love affair with miniatures and they did it together. He built miniatures, he built room boxes and she collected pieces to put in the room boxes. And so um, I am helping the family sell this uh, beautiful collection of fine art miniatures starting next month. So look for that. If you're, if you're not on my mailing list, please get on my mailing list because um, I will be announcing that next week in terms of when that sale is. But I'm also going to be having a couple of really, really, um, I think, interesting webinars because there are some people who maybe never, oh, and by the way, what's behind me on that, uh, behind my shoulder? Uh, our room boxes that Jerry Buckalter had built and that will be part of this estate sale. Um, but I'm going to be having a couple of webinars over the next several weeks because there are people out there who probably never um, participated in an auction, an online auction, and maybe never bought, maybe have never even purchased fine art miniatures. So I'm going to be doing a couple of webinars. One will be about how to participate in a miniatures auction and how to spot a fine miniature. I will be doing a, an auction preview online to share more than what you've just seen uh, in, in the collection. And then I will also be having an estate planning uh, webinar. If you do have a collection that you're looking to sell, I'm going to have a webinar on what your options are uh, if you do want to sell them. So sign up on my website for updates. Um, lots to come in the month of September in advance of this wonderful auction, full stop. Um, I, I mean, I've had just the most amazing experience just going through and cataloging this collection. I feel like I'm like, at, I'm, I'm becoming a one with the Buckalters, you know, feeling their excitement at, the, at buying each piece and meeting with the artists because they had, they created these wonderful relationships with artists. Um, they commissioned pieces, they purchased pieces, pieces, and, and they went to all of the shows and you just get this sense that they just loved what they were doing and everything they had collected, they collected with this beautiful vision in mind. So anyway, I've been having this amazing time cataloging this, this collection and I can't wait to share it and, and, you know, hopefully find, you know, uh, find uh, folks, ha new happy homes for these treasured pieces. So, so to find really some great homes for this beautiful collection. So with that, uh, look for that over the next coming days. Um, let's talk about lighting because that's what we're here for. Um, uh, but, but actually, um, I do want to just take a, a moment to, um, to, 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 uh, say, I hope the folks in the Louisiana area. Are okay. Cause I know a storm is coming there and I hope that they're all going to be okay. Um, but before we begin, let's talk about, uh, I just wanted to, to, to mention that my thoughts are with them and we hope everybody is going to be okay today. Um, with that, let's talk about lighting because that's what we're here for. Uh, and judging by the, by the, the, the registration and the interest, I, I know this just from being interested in miniatures, lighting just tends to be like one of those things I think we get hung up on. It, it appears to be a lot more complicated than it actually is. And there are tons of options out there. So I think what we'll want to do in the next half hour that we're together is talk about, you know, what is the importance of lighting? Why is lighting so important with four miniatures? Uh, talk about the options. What, what are the options out there if you do wanna light your miniatures? And I'm gonna tell you that you're gonna wanna light your miniatures. It's an important part of the process. And, um, and then I'm gonna do some demos on, um, on some lighting. And then we're gonna have a surprise, a surprise guest appearance 
by a miniaturist who's done some really, really great stuff with, with her, with her dollhouse and with lighting. And we're going to bring her up in a little bit and we're going to, we're going to, she's going to share some of her. Uh, my intro. We're, we're going to, not yet. Hang in. <laughs> uh, so hang in. We're going to bring, we're going to bring our special guest up in a little bit to talk about her, her work and, and lighting. Um, so in terms of, 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 lighting, it really is key. Not only because it makes your miniatures look good, but it actually helps you to see them. They're so tiny. And you want to make sure that um, all of the details are, are illuminated. And so that's why lighting is so important. But it really is easier, easier than you think. But if you're going to um, get involved in any kind of miniatures project, your first step really is to map out your plan. You want to make sure you um, understand what your project is, what your project scope is, and think about how lighting sort of fits in and all that. You don't want lighting to be your last, the last thing you think about. You want to make sure you add that into any any uh, planning, whether it's, you know, you're buying your wallpaper, you're buying your flooring, you're buying your, uh, your, the, the, the materials that go in it. So what am I doing? Am I making a dollhouse? Am I doing a room box? Am I doing just a simple vignette? Really think about what it is you're doing, envision it, map it out, write it out, write it on a paper, piece of paper, sketch things out, um, really have a plan before you, uh, before you think about lighting. Um, and then when you think about lighting, what kind of lighting do you want? What is it? What kind of feeling do you, what kind of mood do you want to set? Um, where will these lights go in your dollhouse, room box, vignette? Um, again, what, what kind of uh, feeling do you want to evoke? What kind of mood do you want to have? Because lighting will, uh, the kinds of lighting you choose uh, will, will either reinforce that or detract from that. So you want to make sure you're thinking about what it is you want to feel. And then, of course, what kinds of lights do you actually want to purchase and what kind of lighting techniques do you want to incorporate? And I'm going to go into what those different options are in a little bit of, in a little bit. Um, and then of course, finally, finally in this plan, you want to make sure how your lights get positioned within the plan, because ultimately things break down and things need to get adjusted and changed. So you want to make sure that the lighting is accessible once you have this, your plan so that ultimately you can get to them change a bulb, fix the lighting, uh, change the light maybe. If, you're really, um, if you really are um, ambitious, you, you might want to create a plan that allows you to change the lighting later on. Uh, we're not, that's a little bit, that's really far. Um, but, but so I'm really just going to um, take you through some of the lighting systems and some of the lighting options that are out there right now that you, can, um, that you, you might want to tap into. Like I said, chat box is going to be open throughout, um, and 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 we did get a question about whether or not um, there'll be this will be on a replay. This will actually absolutely be on a replay, um, and also chat box is open for questions throughout. So you know, if you have questions, stop me, um, ask me um, questions, etc. So, and I'm going to get into the demos soon. I'm going to have videos for you too, so don't so you so you don't lose interest. <laughs> um, so, in terms of the the lighting systems that are out there. There are a couple that I'm not gonna to spend too, too much time on. One is tape wiring, tape wire, which I think you've probably heard about. That's really the copper tape system that gets used in some dollhouses, room boxes. I'm not gonna to talk a lot too much about them per, for reasons because I don't know very much about it and it's not my preferred option in terms of wiring for miniatures. I don't like tape system. I think it's, um, a little hard to use. It's a little unreliable. I personally like hard wire. Hard wire is exactly what um, how traditional electrical systems get wired. It's usual actually using wire. So that's one of my favorites. I'm going to talk about hard wire. And the other thing I'm not going to talk about is batteries, battery operated lights. Battery operating lights is great. You, you can definitely choose to go that route the pros and cons of battery operated lights. Battery lights, they're, they are reliable. Um, they are easy to set up and use. They are relatively inexpensive. What I don't like about batteries, battery operated lights, is they tend to be a little bulky. So if you're looking for a little more realism in your, in your miniatures, whether it's a dollhouse or a room box, 
the battery operated lights aren't going to give you that real sense of, of, of realism due to the size, you know, it's got to fit a battery in there and the bulbs aren't, aren't the same as um, traditional dollhouse lighting, the incandescent lighting, which is my favorite, which I'm going to talk about. Um, but you can go with battery operated lights. They're really, they're a great choice. Um, mainly because they're so easy to use and they're really relatively inexpensive. Um, and you could, they go everywhere and you could stick them everywhere and they're just easy, 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 easy. They're a little hard to change the batteries though, once they are set up in a, in a, in a, a vignette or a scene. So um, the other thing is that the options are pretty limited with batteries. Um, the, the choices aren't that gr uh, great in terms of choosing a lighting design or a light. Um, versus the incandescent. I've talked a lot about the incandescent. The incandescent system is my favorite, and that is the traditional dollhouse lighting system. So there's two systems that um, I prefer, incandescent lighting and um, LED. So let's talk about incandescent first. Um, you know, and like I said, incandescent, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you uh, the, the uh, What's so good about the traditional incandescent lights? And these are what you see here, okay? Um, uh, this happens to be a Clarabelle brass light. Um, and Clarabelle lighting is fabulous. Very reliable, very well made. They last forever. And the lights that they, the kind of lights that it emits uh, is, is really true to what you might find in a room that you might enter. And so what's so good about incandescent lighting is the kind of lights, the light that it gives off. It gives off a very nice yellow glow, if you will. Um, and, uh, you know, most of these incandescent lights that you buy, um, they have a bulb that comes out and the bulb has a pin. I'm gonna show you that. You could see it right there. You could see the pin and the pin goes into the little light. It's really very, very simple. Um, and the light is usually attached to some wire and here's your hard wire. So um, let me, I wanna, I wanna, sh I'm gonna show you, cause this is where I think people get really tripped up um, is setting up, uh, is setting up a, a, a hard wire light. So let me just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a little demo. Uh, about setting up a, um, okay, you should be able to see that, about setting up a, um, an incandescent light. Uh, so the thing is, the thing is, like I said, there's a pin, there's the light, but one of the really uh, important things here is the little plug, is the little plug that comes with it. I think people get tripped up because this is a really easy thing to set up is connecting the wire to the plug. And so um, in setting up any kind of lighting system, I find that you'll want each of your lights to be set up with each with an individual plug. And that is for a couple of reasons. Because lights tend to be very, very, uh, uh, it's not that they're unreliable, it's that, um, you know, they, they are, they tend to, you know, literally the air blowing through the, through the doorway can affect the lighting switching. So you lose connections very easily sometimes with dollhouse lighting, it just happens. And so you wanna have separate routes for each light because when that does happen, where, where the wind comes through, messes up your connection, you're gonna to wanna to easily be able to fix it. And what individually connecting your lights individually does, it allows you to go in and fix it later on very easily. So what you're seeing here is how easy you can connect the plug to the light. They're basically, you're pulling out these pins and you're connecting the wires, you're rolling them around, you're reconnecting the pin, you're putting the pin in and then you have the, a tight connection. It's really, really, really that simple. Um, and so uh, that is one of my recommendations in terms of any time you wanna set up a lighting system or even one light or two, have it connect, um, have it connect individually uh, so that it makes your life much easier later on, okay?
Does that make sense? Why don't I take a, a question or two about this? Um, Marie is saying that she has a tape lighting system that she was given. Yeah, I'm, yeah. So I would think that, and, and she's looking for more information on the tape wiring. I would say YouTube is your best friend. You're going to be able to find just about any kind of tutorial on YouTube. So I would suggest heading over to YouTube to get more information about tape wiring. Hey, Alex in um, Victoria. Um, uh, can is there many lights? Oh, okay. LED format. Yes. LED formats is one of my favorites too. Um, beautiful. Usually you would do this with the light fixture attached where you want it, right? Usually you would do this with the light fixture attached where you want it. I think what you're saying, Nicole, is um, uh, you would connect this, these wires, you would, you would, um, connect the wire to you want to, you would make sure the light is in place before you connect the wire. Let's just put it that way. Does that make sense? Um, so let's, um, do, 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 let us go on to, so that's really, uh, that's really just the basics on incandescent lighting. Uh, another really important thing, a really important piece to know about, about, uh, incandescent lighting is, uh, are two other pieces, two other parts to the puzzle, which I think people also get tripped up on is, one is the transformer. And people are like, ah, what is that? This basically uh, connects to your lights. And there are different versions of this, A, B, C, and D. Um, and depending on how many lights you have connected to this transformer will, be, will determine which kind of transformer you, you will need to get. So um, some transformers only can handle a few lights. Some transformers can handle many lights. Um, but we just talked about the, um, the plug, right? What I really like to use are these wonderful power strips. Each light goes into, each light gets plugged into the power strip. I'm gonna show you another demonstration on how this actually works with something that I've made myself. Um, so hold on, let's, let's, so, so you'll see all these pieces come together in this, in this, um, in this project that demo that I put together. So hold on one second while I bring that up. Um, so this is essentially a, a room box, if you will. Um, it has uh, two, it has a pair of sconces that are on the wall. What I did was I connected the sconces to the wall and then I brought the wires in the back of the room box, right? And then I put the power strip on the bottom of that room box and all of the lights get plugged in to the power strip. So it's really very, very, very simple concept. Um, so if anything happens to either of those lights or even if I wanted to add lights, I could add lights and just run a wire to the back to the power strip, right? Um, so Barbara's saying, doesn't the type of transformer depend on the amps and the bulbs? Yes. So the, the transformer relates to the num the power, if you will, of all of the lights. So, you know, less intense transformers can handle fewer lights. So you're really going to want to make sure the number of lights lines up with the transformer that you purchase. Does that make sense? Um, okay. So that is incandescent lighting. So what I really like about incandescent lighting is, is the fact that it does give you that sort of warm glow. It's a little more natural. Uh, it's, 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 um, it, it casts the light that you would see in a, in a real room, which, which is why I like it. Um, okay. So the other kind of light that, that I really, I really, uh, prefer are LED lights. Um, but let me see, before I go on to LED lights, let's see if there's any other questions. Where is the transformer in your room? Okay, so Barbara wanted to know, the, the transformer is, is, um, is actually the kind that plugs into the wall directly. So that's, there are different kinds of transformers you could purchase. The one that's connected to the room box that I just shared is the kind that plugs right into the wall. So um, does that make sense? I hope so. Okay, um, so let's talk about LED lights because LED lights really, um, haven't been around as long as incandescent lights for sure, but they are definitely, I would, I would think becoming much more preferred. Some of the um, benefits of the LED lights is that they are very easy to use. They last a very long time. They tend to, they don't get hot. And one of the, one of the actually um, 
negatives on the incandescent lighting is that the bulbs tend to get hot. It's something that you have to worry about. Um, but the LEDs don't get light. Um, and they give off a really nice light, uh, a very bright light. It tends to be less natural than the incandescent light, but it does give a nice bright light. Um, the other thing is um, there are options within the LED lighting in terms of the brightness and the warmth. So you can find a warm light, a yellow light, a white light, a bright light within the LEDs um, and different sizes, the picos, the nanos. So um, all of this stuff is available on miniatures.com, by the way. And you can go in and take a look at that um, uh, of options. You know, it, 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 the LED tends not to be as natural as the incandescent, and it tends to be a, a harsher look, uh, harsher. I don't know if that's the right word. It's harder because it's so bright. Um, but I think let let me. I'm going to share another um, another little tutorial because I think what people get tripped up with about about the LED. Oh, hold on a second. Why is that happening? Let me just pull this down. Hold on. Incandescent LED. Okay, bring up the LED light. Um, people get tripped up with LED lights, but they are pretty simple. They are pretty simple to hook up. Um, and, and I'll talk a little bit about the different parts about the, L the LED lights, but essentially you have the actual light itself, which is connected to a couple of wires. Um, and uh, what's also really good about the LED lights is that it gets connected to a battery, um, which are easy to sort of replace. Um, but again, going back to this mapping plan, you need to make sure you're mapping things out really well so that you can find um, the, uh, the battery pack if you need to change the battery. But they're really, really easy to uh, hook up. It's essentially taking the two wires and of, of the light and connecting it to the two wires of the battery. And then you just twist and twist and twist. You're going to want to seal those wires, of course, because you can't have wires touch because it'll create a short but once you have this this light set up it's super easy to go ahead and and put the battery in right these are um very easy to find and purchase and then most led lights come with a little switch and so once you have everything connected you go ahead and turn it on and you have your your light very very simple so I do like the LED lights for that, for that, for that reason. Um, so let's see if we have any other questions. It's, it's really a lot uh, to take in, but okay. I found a switchboard houseworks that turns on each room light on a different circuit. Oh, very nice. Cool. I like that. Um, great point, Heather. Very nice. Do you know if anyone is selling parts like JAF had a year, years ago? I don't know who that is. Um, I don't make my own fixtures. Yes, that's what I, I think. You guys are all talking amongst yourself. Go ahead, go talk amongst yourselves. I think, but if you have any questions, definitely let me know. Um, and then, uh, so, so just in terms of, I mean, these are really, really, really basics. But like I said, if you're if you're starting a project, YouTube is your best friend. You can find just about any question answered on YouTube. But well, really, the the um, the purpose of this is really just to introduce some of the lighting options to you, to you, um, and um, and just show you that what the options are that are available, and also maybe give you a little bit of encouragement to, to let you know to see how really easy it is to set up some of these. All right, um, you can also have way more LED lights on a single transformer. Very true. Very true, um, Lewis. You can you can fit more LED lights on on um, one system. Um, how is some of the work I've seen in my webinars is very theatrical. How is that done? I don't know. If that's, is that, I think, I'm assuming that is a question for me. Um, you know, lighting does create a theatrical look and feel because at the end of the day, dollhouse is diorama. It's illusion. You're creating a mood. And so, and that's why I think lighting is so important because it sets that mood. Um, so Anita is wondering what size transformer to use. So when you purchase the transformer, it usually tells you how many lights it will accommodate. So you wanna make sure you know your plan. All right, I'm gonna have five lights, 10 lights, 25 lights. The transformer that you purchase usually will, it will tell you how many lights it can accommodate. Um, does the 
circuit with LED lights need to need a resistor? I, I do not believe it does. You, you know, it does. No, um, the LED lights connect right to a battery pack. There, there are some LED lighting systems that have uh, that that um, can be used with a transformer. Um, there is a guy. His name is Evan. Evan. Evan Designs. Oh God, it's killing me. Um, Evan's Lighting. He has an amazing assortment of of LED lights. I would check him out um, if you're really serious about LEDs and you want to know about all of your options in LEDs. Evan Designs, I believe, is the name of the company. Um, uh, someone wants to know how hot does the incandescent the how hot does the incandescent lights become? They get pretty hot. Um, they get pretty hot, and that's the trade off. Um, not not enough to burn you, but just enough so that it's um, it gives off an, uh, enough heat. It isn't the amount of light fixtures; it's the amount of bulbs that you have to watch for. Okay, that's a good point, Michelle. Yes, Evans Designs. Yes, yes. Thank you, Fran. Um, when they say they light, they mean bulbs, correct? It's the number of bulbs. Thank you for um, correcting that. Um, the transformers that you purchase will tell you how many bulbs you can accommodate. So yeah, just to clear that up. Um, okay, so we've talked about some of your options in terms of, of um, types of systems, the types of bulbs. Um, so the big takeaway here is lighting really is key really helps to bring to life your miniatures. It is a lot easier than you think if you just plan accordingly and make sure you map out your plan. Um, and I think what's the most important out of all of this is really just have fun, just have fun with it. Um, and I don't think there's anyone on the planet who has more fun with her miniatures and her lighting of her miniatures than Cindy Coons. Cindy, um, we're gonna bring Cindy up now. Um, because I wanted to, I, if you haven't, I, Cindy's actually been on before uh, on one of my Meet the Miniaturists because she's got a really great collection of miniatures. And I wanted to share um, some of her work specifically around lighting because what she does with lighting is just incredible. So I see Cindy is on with us. She is our very special, star, a special guest star today. Um, we don't see you yet, Cindy, but I'm I'd sure in a I moment. For, I'm trying to figure out why you don't see me. I'm working on that. All right. Hi. What's it, going on? It's all good. Hang um, on. So, like I said, um, you know, what city has been able to do with lighting is really, really wonderful. And I wanted to share that. And let me set the stage. It is definitely what Cindy has done is aspirational for sure. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys something, you know, to, to look forward to. Mm -hmm. you, you all might be at different yeah. stages of your own. Um, in miniatures journey, but wherever you're at, this yeah, is, this is going to be good examples of, of what you guys can achieve uh, with your miniatures. All right. So All right. let's see if we are, we're still, at, we're still having, still having Cindy. I don't know why. I don't know either. We'll is the, wait, 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 start your video. Okay. And there I am. And there <laughs> you are. Yeah. <laughs> Cindy, thank you so much for joining and being special guest today. Where did it go again? You're there. You're, you're oh, you can see me. Okay, we can see, we can see your hand. Okay. Oh, that's not yeah, good. Now we can oh, see. Oh, that was the problem. I had my hand. <laughs> <laughs> we always start off in the problem. No, Where no worries. <laughs> so let's let's talk a little bit about talk a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your involvement in miniatures. How long have you been collecting and and the dollhouse, of course, behind you? Oh goodness! So I got the dollhouse as a gift, well, as a kit, as a gift for Christmas, probably 23, 24 years ago. Wow. Um, Ray surprised me. It was after we had done a lot of Christmas gifts, and it was a he brought up these boxes, and I'm like, what the heck? Well. It was the it was the queen and the queen. I the, love. We started, That's her name, right? Is that her course, name? Of course, of course, she's the queen. You know, I've been demoted to the princess. So, like, <laughs> what the hell? So she she took us three years to build. Yeah. And Ray had started the the wiring, and I'm sorry that you hate tape wire so much, but apparently it works for us. So, <laughs> I don't hate it. We don't have that's problems good. with our tape wire and it it works for us. And well, that's good. So that's actually really good information. So you're the queen is completely tape wired. 
absolutely. And and the luxury closet, which is interesting, uh, is tape wiring, hard wiring, and battery wire. So it's got all three lighting in the luxury closet. So just to say that I'm happy with the results of anything you choose because there's different ways to do different types of things depending on what your needs are. Okay. So I'm, I, you know, I'm glad we're getting that other point of view for sure. So is the queen mostly tape wired? The, the queen is tape wired. Tape the wired. Queen is tape. Now with one exception, uh -huh. if I take you up to the man cave, doo -doo -doo -doo, the light fixture yeah. over the chess board where they're playing chess, that fixture um, is battery operated. And that's because I got like so smart that I'm going to like go up and I'm going to play with the wires and I'm going to do it. And here I am with a razor, you know, an exacto knife. And I'm up there playing. And what do I cut? Of course, I cut the wire. <laughs> I cut the wire, <laughs> cut the wire to that fixture dead. Now, I also, there was a light bulb up. I'm trying to do this. How am I in the attic? In the attic. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the yeah. attic, there's a light bulb. Yeah, that same wire took out the two lights. So there's a light bulb hanging up in the attic that is no longer functional. So I need to rewire that, and then yeah. I'll get those back again. All right, so, so, so do me a favor. Can you show us the entire house? Absolutely. So how do I flip this down so that I can get... Are you on your, your iPhone? Yes. So just tap on the screen and look for the little flip flippy... Uh, icon and it'll flip. Flippy icon. <laughs> flippy. You know, it's a little... <laughs> looking for the flippy. Um, <laughs> why am I not? I oh, got it. <laughs> there you go. There's... All right. Oh, no, <laughs> perfect. 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 So just right. give me a favor. Just um, hold as as steady as you can, so we can all just take a look and breathe in this humongous house. How many rooms are we talking about here? So we talked about that last time. I think I came up with 13 or, 14. 13 or 14. I think it was 14 when we were all said and done. And there you are know, and everywhere. We added the basement. Don't ignore the bottom for the cellar. The room on the right, that is going to be turned into a wine cellar. It's right now I'm in the process of ripping everything out. And so it's, it's nasty. But there you know, are, would you say, more than two dozen lights? Oh, my God. There are oh lights God. everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, and would it help? Would it help if I turn off that? Yeah, well, we can totally see. Yeah. Um, you've also set it up so that there are different um, options for setting up the. Is it floor by floor? Tell me about how you set it up. So every room is run on its own wire and wiring room. system. So, yeah. for example, the kitchen is on one lighting system. Uh -huh. uh, the dining room on another. And what I can show you yep. is the Her, way uh, Ray, Ray designed this. Oh my God, take notes, kids. Take notes because this is the way to do and, it. But it doesn't have to be done this way. This is very sophisticated. Ray is a smart guy. He's not an electrician, no. but he, he can do this. And so, no, but it's look, aspirational. And that's what right. I want to share. So there's the kitchen, the foyer, the yep. living room. So each room is on its own switch. Yes, I love Rachel Joe. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You'd love him more if you knew him. So everything he's done has been. Now, let me explain a little bit more. What yeah. that means is underneath the queen, see those these wires? Yep. So those wires go down and under the dollhouse. Yep. And the dollhouse sits on a table. Uh -huh. So when we blow a fuse, that fuse, we have to get under the queen. We have to slide her off the table onto, what do they call Horses, what? Sawhorses. Uh -huh. we, have to, we have to slide her off onto sawhorses so we can get to the wiring and then <laughs> change the fuse for right. that room. So when I get all smart and sassy and think that I'm going to like, ooh, I'm going to change this. It could be something as stupid as I'm going to move the chandelier and you do it while power's on and you go, poof. Well, why did that one just go out? Oh, because you're an idiot. You left the, the wire on. You turn, left it turned on. Right. And you can hit something and do, hit it, make short it out. And bam, you just took out a room, which explains the master bedroom. 
which right. currently has no lighting. So there's a light, there's a lamp on the nightstand. There's a Tiffany light, uh, the source of all evil on the table back there. Oops. <laughs> so, but, then, you, but you did plan well that you could go and get uh, to change the, um, what did you call it? When you had a oh, short. Oh, yes, yes. The fuse, so the that, fuse. So what we did when, when before, well, before we put in any wallpapering or any flooring, what we had done was we took pictures of oh look at this of every room and where <laughs> the wiring was wow and all of the measurements they're all labeled <gasps> so the measurements of each one what all of those labels mean like how high it is how, how far from the wall how far from the top how and how long it runs so that you're able to now this is the kitchen so if you see the kitchen oh and right gosh. back there you, it's the backsplash and right. so there's the backsplash. I know where all that those wires run, and I can then do whatever I want with them. I can I can run lighting anywhere where those wires are, and I kind of had him do it that way. So if even in the dining room it's done, and wow. I can always put in like little candles on yeah. that on the, the the table in the back of the dining room. So I have lots of options because I always know where my wiring is. So, so you can, champagne. if you want, I love that you have your champagne there. So <laughs> you you, know, and I forgot to offer everyone oh, something. Once you, again, I have forgotten. I'm you so are rude. too much. You're so <laughs> awesome. So if you wanted to add a light, let's say to a room, you could go ahead and do that the way you set this up? Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's, that's how you do it. By knowing where your, ta your tape wire is, I can then come along and I can... I can put a lamp in, I can put a pl an outlet in, I can, the possibilities are endless. I can do really anything. You know, we've got these little, the neon light in the window. And I used to have the girls, girls, girls up there, but I moved that now into the luxury closet. So I can, you can wire that right into, it has a battery pack, but it can be wired right into yeah. The, the tape system and, you know, anything, anything that you've got can now be added in. I you know, know, I need to fix my wiring. Now that's the room that has the battery operated. Um, yeah. 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 Fixture. Well, just so. like a real house. There's always maintenance. There's always going to be maintenance. Oh, for sure. For I'm, sure. I'm like actually, it just sounds like to me that there are more options of flexibility with tape wire versus hard wire because you will have to, either see the wires or run the wires right. versus the tape wire. But the way you've done it is really, really great. The way you- Because if you, yeah, if you plan ahead and you know, you know that you're going to want to add things in the future and you know that, you know, what are the opportunities? Where are you going to, where do you think you could possibly go with your lighting? What would you want? To, where would you want to possibly add lights? And just consider that. And you can always- add wiring after the fact on the ceilings as long as you haven't you know papered the ceilings or you know done, done some you know medallions and things of that nature right. you can always add more tape wire on the ceiling and then just cover it up with paint but that gives you other options so for example this chandelier which i yeah. love this it's the matching chandelier to the one in the foyer mm -hmm. and when i hung this one you can see I just added more tape wire. I took it from the point that it was on the wall back there and I ran all new wires yeah. so that I could add this. Now it has to be covered, but right. you know, just to, to look at it, you would never know that those wires were there. Right. So all the other ones are, you know, all the wires are covered in every room. You can't, you wouldn't know that there's wires yeah. there. They're all hidden. But yeah. so, Cindy, go a little slower for us so that we can see because it's you're going. Oh, very... I'm sorry. I'm That's sorry. Nice. So, so we're going to take a question. Um, how do this is how do you access the tape wire when the house is so beautifully finished? And I think you answered that with the fact that you had it all mapped out. Correct. Correct. So I know if I'm having problems with my lighting, I yeah. know where my tape wire is. That is in sad. every room. So that I have a, like a book of, of all the lighting. So for each room, I know exactly where the tape wires fall. Yeah. And really the only, the only problems I've ever had with any of the tape wire is back. I'm just going to move this over. When I, 
go back here. Mm. <laughs> there is right behind this. Yep. That right here, there's a point where they all connect at this corner. Yeah. And that corner occasionally just becomes not as tight against the wall. Uh -huh. And that in my center um, chandelier goes out. So I know when it's out, just come over here and push that tape in a little bit and all better. So yeah. that's the only one I've ever had a problem with. And it's because it's a junction. It's because it's got a corner and they all, all the tape wire connects. So it's thicker. It's yeah. got like four or four layers of wire. And that's yeah. the problem yeah. with that one. But I mean, that's the only thing I've ever had problems with. Awesome. All right, let's take one more question and then we can let Cindy go. Um, someone says they love tape. We have a lot of tape uh, friendly people. It's oh. easy. It's so easy. The other and I'll, you know, if you want me to do a demo, I can I can certainly do a it's demo it. and 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 yeah, do it show well, you we're gonna so we're gonna put your contact information in the yeah. chat box because you're accessible on Instagram. Absolutely. Um, and you're very approachable. So you guys, if you want to reach out to Cindy, she's really great on, on social media, very responsive. Cindy, thank you so much for being our very special guest star on this. Let's thank chat you. about miniature lighting today. <laughs> thank um, you, Darren. Yes, thank you so much. So we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and um and lower your video. <laughs> um, thank you, Darren. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Been, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So guys at home, I hope you enjoyed this talk about lighting. Um, don't forget as we wrap up this uh this talk that uh Tuesday, Walt Disney um family museum uh zoom tuesday night 7 p.m link is in my uh is we'll put it with the link in the chat box to register we'll see you on tuesday and then make sure you check in on my upcoming auction which is going to be super fabulous um thank you all for joining this um this sunday afternoon evening event i hope everybody has a great week coming up and we'll talk to everybody soon thank you so much have a great day night morning bye <laughs>